what I would like to do with you folks is uh, just start out, and whoever wants to speak first, last, or somewhere in between, man, no, makes no difference. Uh, tell me about growing up in Nevada when you were a kid, Tom Martin. Well, growing up in the kids, I kind of had a kind of a strange childhood. My father had been an army man for uh, 17 years, and when he married my mother and came back to Nevada, we were uh, all born in Battle Mountain. But uh, he raised us like we were in the army, and I couldn't handle it. So when I was 13, I left home, and I went to work at different places and, and everything. But mostly, we grew up in a sheep camp when we were kids, because my family were sheep people. And they had cattle too later on, more cattle after. So I just kind of had a life like that, uh, working for an association in 25. And I repped, I did a lot of repping and that kind of stuff. But uh, I always wanted to say that what I have done, all those old timers ahead of me did so much more. They were the guys that really settled it down, and guys like me that went in. We were very fortunate to have those type of guys kind of keep us going. So that, <laughs> Okay, Jim, where, where, where did you start out here in Nevada? <coughs> I started out in Mountain City, Nevada. <laughs> and my dad owned the ranch just across the fence from the Spanish ranch. And I went to school in the cookhouse yard of the Spanish ranch for all the grammar school and I got. And they was like five or six of us guys there, us kids there. And when uh, when I got out of high school, I went to work with the Spanish Ranch. I wanted wanted to learn how to ride bucking horses, and I went to the right place to learn. <laughs> and you know, they were probably as close to heaven as I can get because uh, they had about ten thousand mother cows and. Not a shoe down the place, and five or six hundred head of horses, and all of them need road. <laughs> so I grew up in a ideal situation for a guy that liked excitement. There was plenty of it there, and uh, they'd let them horses get six, seven years old before they'd start them. Some of them was a little snuffy. So why was that? Because those horses couldn't stand the miles of young horses on that wagon, whatever. So they had to have some age on them so that they could stand the miles, right? That is correct. You know, you'd, you'd start them horses in the wintertime, and even then they they wouldn't let you take them outside on the wagon in the spring. They made you turn them loose until fall and you know, ride, ride them short, shorter rides in the fall. So when you went to work there, uh, out of school, or out of grade school, who who was running the Spanish ranch at that time? Stanley Ellison was the manager. He was there at that time. And Claude Barkdale was the, actually run the ranch, you know, the cattle. Ranch manager, yeah. Ranch mm -hmm. manager. They had a different way of starting horses than they do today, and that's the way they wanted them started. And get on one of them old horses in the crowd and turn him around one way each and they open the gate and he was on your own and went outside. Went outside on him. Uh -huh. So how'd that work out? If you liked the excitement it worked pretty good. <laughs> so it didn't do a lot of soft feel and uh, <laughs> flagging and all that kind of stuff. You didn't spend much time getting them to like you. No. <laughs> no. But you know them. That that's the way they want them horses broken. You, you that the reason is because that you know they just they needed them tough horses and uh, they wanted you to lead them out of the crowd and saddle them up and get on them and go to work. Go. Yeah. There like, was no gooseneck trailers or anything in those days. There no you went gooseneck trailers. <laughs> no gooseneck trailers. Right. You trotted a lot of miles. So how far would you trot sometimes before you started to work out? Oh, I would think a lot of times 10, 15 miles. So by then you kind of got them loosened up and they were kind of softened <laughs> up a little they bit? Was, they was ready to go to work then. They weren't trying to kill you when you got over there, or some of them? No, right? most of them was 
read the writing on the wall by that time. And they, but you'd have big roe deers, you know, and lots of calves to brand them. And a lot of times you trotted out that far, but you had to trail the beef herd back to the field. And you trail them back 15 miles. So were you do an open road deer where you didn't have a fence, or did you put them in the fence court? There was no fences any. No fences. It was all open. <laughs> it's all open. So you, everything was an open road deer. Yeah, every day was open. Yeah. And it probably was a good thing because there was so many cattle that could intermingle with. You know, you would gather so many different brands that you'd near have to mother every all them calves up when you as you was branding them to get get them back to the right people. It took a long time. It's a lot better to put them in a krill and have one arm and just go ahead and go to roping, but it wasn't possible then. Well, then they had reps come each time that you did that, right? They'd be a rep from them all them outfits. And mm -hmm. I myself repped for the Spanish ranch at the IL seven years, spring and fall. I see. And uh, the fall was the same thing, you know, you'd gather the big blue deers and cut the strays out. In my case, why well, we'd cut them pitchforks out and you'd have, when you got two or three hundred, why well, you'd They'd help you out the gate, and they never sent no help with you either. <laughs> you took them home. Just went home yourself with the yeah. cattle. But the cattle was different. They was used to be a drove. And Were they, the cattle rode on enough to where they really weren't wild? I mean, if you got them held up, could you kind of handle them? Oh yeah, you, you know they was they was gentle after you got them bunched up. They was not really wild cattle. They was a lot of lot of just be wild cattle in them, but not, they all of them wasn't really wild. Right, right. So now, Tom, you said your family was in the sheep business, yeah. which was the Jenkins Sheep yeah, Company, Jenkins right? Company, yeah. Well, then, uh, they had cattle too. They had cattle had, also. Yeah, but they, they were a large <coughs> outfit, and we were raised south of Adam Island, too. They went to the desert. Uh, it was probably the largest, uh, particularly when they bought the 25 in, in the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. And so we ran about 10,000 cows, and, 40,000 sheep. And really? Yes, so, so. So, how did the 25 brand come to be? Did you people register no, the 25? No, the 25 came, uh, uh, the, uh, it, it was, it was there, it came out of Reese River originally, they tell me, that was the story. It came out of the, that, uh, they bought cattle when, when, uh, when they first, uh, when they first got in there. And so, that's my understanding, that the iron is what they called the ranch from the iron. So then, but the, the uh, did the Jenkins company obtain the iron? Yes, they did. And okay. then when they sold it, it went with the. Uh, went, okay. With the, so did they use the same iron on, on sheep? No, they used a, a paint iron. circle J on the sheep. On, on a paint yeah, iron. And on then the they sheep. used the JHL on the on the Jenkins cattle. I see. And the Jenkins cattle. Well, my grandfather came over from Wales in the eighteen. Yeah, uh, well, it was really early in the 1800s. Well, then he came in and as a miner, as a whales from a miner, and then he got into the sheep business and, okay. and of course, built a big company. And then when he died, my grandmother carried it on. And when my she died, well, my mother married my dad, and he was an army man, and she talked him into coming back to Nevada. And so when they came back, us boys were all born. In the, in the so in that the, was where the name Cap Marble came from. Yeah, because uh -huh. he was a captain yeah. in the military, yeah. correct? Oh yeah, he had been. Right. He was. He was in the First World War, and then he was sent. And he was on the border when they fought Pontevedra and, right. and, and, and and all that. You know, but so. You know, <clears throat> I hate that. Well, I'm ready. Yet. When you I used to be in the predator. Yeah. I used to be in the predator control. <laughs> How old are you, Jim? What's that? Oh, that nice white wall. I wish you could see as well. I knew you. About ten years. Ago, that that shot was a fly spotter. Here, Clamber. Yes, with that fly spotter. I don't even know my age. So. <laughs> That's bitter. Here okay. Uh, so, Tom, can you tell me, what was a typical day when you were working for the Jenkins? It, it, was, a, 
pretty much the same thing as a young person, of course. And you know, I worked for different other outfits, but but it, Mr. Jenkins' company, well, it was it was pretty typical, just as as Jim said. Most of the <coughs> outfits, like he said, didn't have any drift fences, and the 25 cattle mixed with Ellison's, and and so they all had reps. And I used to I repped on the uh, Ellison wagon a couple of different times on the Squaw Valley. Uh, Ellison's had the Squaw Valley and the Spanish Ranch. And I never was at the Spanish Ranch, but I was at Squaw Valley. Mm -hmm. So for people that are, are not tuned into the vernacular of rep in the cowboy world, what did you do when you rep? What did you well, do? the same things Jim said. You could pick up your own cattle and like he said, the rodeo for held and they branded uh, you have to call the iron to come in and there was an old timer that worked there at the twenty five and he'd been there for years and when he brought one in they'd say, What is it? And, and he'd say, I think it's a 25. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that last? <laughs> well, he was, he'd been there so many years that, that they never, they didn't pay much attention. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, did you operate the sheep at all or did you? Break? I was never, except in the winter, sometimes I went to the desert down by Fallon yeah. and, and helped with the sheep, yeah. But yeah. I, my brother Dick, as he, yeah. after he came back from the mm -hmm. service too, he took the sheep, but they always had good fast people that ran the sheep. Right. Yeah, they they were pretty much the, the sheep bosses were either Spanish fast or French fast. It tended they had the French fast, the Spanish fast, but they didn't get along. So they had to have they had to <laughs> separated. Have separated. Yeah. Right. So Jim, when you when you were over there at the Spanish ranch, and Stanley was there, of course. Then when did Bill Kane show up? He. <coughs> He showed up, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, but it was after uh, after Claude Barkdahl left. So he kind of took Barkdahl's place. Yeah. But you told me, Tom, that you started him out on the well, 25. Well, I know, the boys were big cowboys when they came to work for the 25. But they actually stole Bill from us because they sent that little girl to, to kind of learn, learn him on, and he married her later. <laughs> Now he married, that the, just he married the boss's daughter. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but he was a good man. So in those days, did they have? Uh, did they run two wagons? The one at the at Squaw Valley and one at the Span when you were there? Yes, sir. Same deal. Just same like, same, same like, deal. Yeah. Same so, thing. But those wagons, uh, I can remember because I was here. You know, and I was there. Mm -hmm. Those wagons, lots of times, would never meet. One one wagon crew would never see the other wagon crew unless they went to town and got drunk. So. <laughs> but no, but the Spanish ranch and 25 wagon always came together in Squaw Valley. Oh, they did? I mean, not the Spanish ranch, but the, uh, the other one. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, it was about every year because you had to come, you had to come down Rockford for the 25 cattle over a pass that came, and that was a hard thing, but 25 cattle would come back down that I oh yeah, yeah, I understand that. So now, when did this lady show up in your life? Well, it's 68 years ago. 68 years ago? Be yeah. 68 years ago? <laughs> well, I met her before I went to the service, and then I went to service for three years, but while I was in there, well, uh, I'd come back on a furlough, and I decided after the marriage, I mean, she married me. Really? <laughs> so then I, they sent me back over to, to, to China and, and Okinawa, and I, and I was there. So my first kid, I didn't see him until he was six years old, six months old. That would be Tommy Jr. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. the oldest one. Yeah. Yeah. But you lived in California yes, originally, right? Yes, I was raised right? in Southern And your family California. was there from California? Yes. And mm -hmm. so how did you and Tom meet, him in California, you on the wagon well, I went 25. to college with his cousin. Yeah. And oh. she invited me up to Battle Mountain in the summer. And that's when I met Tom. Really? Mm -hmm. How'd that work out? Worked out great. <laughs> I, I fell so. in love and he fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, you guys got married and then where did you first live when you came with Tom to Nevada? Where were you at? We lived in Battle Mountain. Battle Mountain, right. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to the 25 from Battle And you were there at the 25? Yeah, we lived mm -hmm. at Stampede quite a while. Oh, Change did you? Company owned Stampede. Oh, yeah, sure. And so we lived there quite a while. Right. And then, then after they, uh, 
about 25, well then we moved to the 25. I see. And then J 